comment is mainly for this year's new board members. And by the way, congratulations. Um, let me give you some background information on Fossil Free California's involvement in the board that might give you some understanding of any apparent impatience and frustration on our part. Fossil Free California representatives have politely made public comment to CalSTRS Investment Committee meetings for the last six years. Six years ago, we quoted Vegas Longstreth, former commissioner to the SEC. He warned that fossil fuel investments were risky investments. He said that fiduciaries were justified in divesting from them for financial reasons alone. He also warned that engaging fossil fuel companies in the hope that they would change their business model would be futile. In his presentation to the board, Al Gore echoed the futility of engaging with fossil fuel companies. His experience of engaging with them for decades had not been productive. He said that some companies would seem to be taking action, or at least promise to take action, and then renege on their promise and backslide. And here we are, six years later, learning the hard way that fossil fuel investments have indeed been risky investments. For while staff continue to engage with fossil fuel companies, and while the world witnesses more unprecedented fires and floods, our investments in those companies cost our pension at least $5.5 billion in profit. Board members, please recognize that the fossil fuel era is ending. Peak demand for the industry has begun. And as Alicia Steiger warned at the offsite meeting in October, any cost of getting up too soon is better than the cost of getting up too late. We urge you to follow New York City's example and completely divest CalSTRS of its fossil fuel investments by 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Amin, Abdi, three minutes. Good morning. My name is Amin Abdi. Um, and I'm a high school student. I'm 18 years old. And I'm not attending school today because I think some aspect of what these kids are saying should be recorded. They've been coming to you every meeting since May, asking you to divest from fossil fuels that's destroying their future. And I'm here today to represent these kids. And I would like to invite you for a couple of things. First of all, talk with us today and ask these kids and have an honest conversation on why they think that investing in fossil fuels is such a terrible thing. Let us celebrate you publicly in the press and our global network. For those of you who are ready to be on the right side of history, we have Congress prepared to document you saying that even though the time for engaging fossil fuel companies has long passed, Tell your members and the public who we are. Most of these kids have been labeled as environmentalists, simply. But these are kids as young, as young as 10 years old and college students that are asking you to divest. And the last thing that we invite you to do is put divestment on the agenda, please, so that it's discussed in your next meeting. We do not understand how you keep saying that you believe in the science of climate change, but are not willing to take and make properly examine all your options. Thank you. Thank you. Hannah Delacalle. Hannah Delacalle. Two minutes. Hi, my name is Hannah Delacalle, and I'm a 20-year-old UC Davis student. I've been here twice now to ask you to divest from fossil fuels. Last time, I told you about my heart-wrenching truth, which is that no matter how hard I work, I'm not going to be able to make a difference in my field until it's too late. And that's why I'm here again today, to ask you to divest and to skip away from my studies in order to do that. You may not see how your actions here have anything to do with the climate crisis. The billions of dollars you work with and the many different uh, investments that you have to make, it's not surprising that it's hard to lose sight behind all the face values. 
After all, there is a lot at stake. This pension fund is supposed to hold up thousands of teachers for their retirement and to support them all the way through. So you do have to make very smart investments. But yet at the same time, this pension fund is the only option that teachers have. They don't have social security and they can't open up 401ks. No matter how dirty the money is, they have to accept the money that you're giving them. But I don't have to tell you this because they're already here begging you to see the reality of the situation we're in. The climate crisis has given every single one of us a choice. We either stay in a sinking ship without even trying to fix it, or we actually do something and everything in our power to plug up the holes and get the water out of the ship. And some of us have more powers than others to do something. So I'm asking you now to choose our future and to invest in a green future. Thank you. Gonzalo. Okay, sorry. Um, we'd like to request that the um, youth versus the populace go now because they've got to go to the capital to be in the march. So if they can go next, the next four people, would that be okay? Yes, I'll take care of that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carrie Ramirez. So this is, uh, we have Carrie Ramirez. Uh, I have them here. Carrie Ramirez, Dolce Arias, Irina Saldana, Carolyn Noor. Yes. Carrie Ramirez. Hello, my name is Lucette, and I'm going to be reading the testimony of youth who are minors who are not allowed to be recorded. Hello, my name is Suhey, and I am an 11 year old. I go to Urban Promise Academy, and I am in the sixth grade. Today, I want to talk about the policy of engagement. You have told us that you don't believe in divestment because it is not important, and you would rather engage in fossil fuel companies. I've never heard of the word engagement, except, except for when people get married. You claim that engagement works. What are you trying to get the fossil fuel companies to do? Don't you know that the fossil, fuel is hurt? fossil fuels are hurting the planet? Can you prove that engagement works? What's your evidence? Here's a piece of evidence. According to the Reuters News, fossil fuel companies spent 1% in clean energy. That means 99% was spent on pollution. So you're telling me that you want to be in a relationship with fossil fuels companies? What have they done before other than pollute the planet? That sounds like a toxic relationship. So I'm reading a testimony from Meyer. My name is Kai, I'm a sixth grader at UPA, and I'm 11 years old. I live in Oakland. We want healthcare to divest for both economic and political reasons. Even if someone buys the stock, divestment makes a political statement. You wouldn't be the only institution divesting from fossil fuels. As of February 2018, 831 institutions had divested over six trillion from fossil fuels. You definitely would not be the only ones divesting. You would allow teachers to be part of a movement to show their support for their students to have a future. It would mean a lot to us to have your support. I would be here right now saying this to you, but because you will not record my testimony, I am forced to just write this to you. Hello, my name is Christopher, and I'm a seventh grade at Urban Thomas Academy. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I need to make sure we have you listed here, okay? Oh, okay. that's part of the hearing. Do you write your name? What is your she's not really a seventh grader, she's reading a testimony. My name is Carrie Ramirez, I go to Skyline College in San Bruno. She's reading a testimony okay. for a minor. Just what, let me just, I just have a question and I want to, mm -hmm. sure. I don't thank you so much. Mm -hmm. She'll just ask a question and she can, your name is? It's Carrie Ramirez. Thank you, um, Carrie. You have two minutes. Thanks, Carrie. I just did that twice. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Christopher and I'm a seventh grader at Urban Promise Academy. I've been going to board meetings for the past nine months and hope that you to divest and hope for you to invest from fossil fuels. I want you to be here today in person, but I have a science and math test to take, so I've made this message ahead of time. According to your divestment policy, no further action will be taken until all efforts of engagement have been fully exhausted. But what is more exhausting than carbon emissions rising faster and faster each year? I'm lost in deep thoughts on why rising carbon emissions isn't enough to understand that divestment on fossil fuels is and on fossil fuels is extremely important. Aside from devastating forest fires, 
fossil fuels isn't going to help the situation. I know every board member here knows that you can, that you continuing continue investing on what's contributing to the destruction of our planet. Sharon, from the board meeting we had on January 16th, it seemed as though you wanted to say something, but it was it was if there was something that stopped you from doing so. Whatever that thing is stopping you, you listen to what you think is right for the future of us youth, for your family, for future generations, and not just to an investment strategy that will eventually be pointless if our planet is on fire. Finally, by investing in fossil fuel industries, you are contributing to the fact that the vast majority of the money work we give fossil fuel industries are literally spent on the destruction of our future. Of the $6 billion you invest in them, only 1% is spent on renewable energy. It is time to try something new and to give us a chance. So this is from Ajane, a 14-year-old. He said, hi, my name is Ajane. I'm 14 years old, and I couldn't say this to you guys because you only record 18 plus. Um, you say that you're engaging in fossil fuel companies, but since the world is still getting hotter and the ice is still melting, we can tell it's not making the change you need. You can engage with Starbucks and ask them to use paper straws, but you can't engage with a fossil fuel company and make them get off fossil fuel. Hello, this is another testament. What is your name? Dulce. Dulce, okay, Dulce, thank you. Hello, my name is Angelica, and I am currently 15 years old. To get straight to the point, we want calisters to divest in fossil fuels, from fossil fuels. Not just me who wants this, but teachers, the youth, and other community members. Mr. Kelly from your board has suggested that intelligent people can debate how quickly our world needs to get off fossil fuels. But that is not what science tells us. Science tells us that every gallon of fossil fuel that is burned hurts people and animals and threatens to push us past the tipping point where we can't go back. Our house is on fire, and you are rewarding the people throwing gas on the flames. Our house is on fire, and you need to act like it. Don't stand with fossil fuel companies. Stand with the students. <coughs> hey, what is your name? My name is Carrie Ramirez, I'm 18 years old. Carrie Ramirez? I'm speaking for Aiden, who's 13 years old. He's in 8th grade from the Fruit Road District of Maryland. He met me multiple times at Foster Board Games, and I wrote this to deliver my message. Why is investing in fossil fuels a good choice? Why is divestment not a good strategy? Your job is to prioritize teachers and make sure that they have money for their retirement. But your most important duty is to care for human beings. Teachers are human, students are human, you are human, yet, you, yet your actions show otherwise. Investment is immoral. You have heard the same things over and over. Have you really registered the fact that your investments are contributing to the destruction of our planet? When you met with us, you said your number one duty is to get money for teachers' retirement. But investing in fossil fuels doesn't even get you that much money in the first place. You make it seem as though you don't have a lot of power, but you do. Just by being on the board, and your actions are immoral. I would have preferred to say this in person, but not only do I have a math test, you just wouldn't record me to say it myself anyways. Money plays no part in a future that is on fire. Thank you. Who is under 18? Do you want him to go now or do you want him to go after? No, we can. Is that Ramori Cash? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we'll just turn the uh, recording off here in the auditorium, please. This, this individual is less than 18 years of age. Ramori? Thank you. Thank you, Ramori. Hi, my name is Ramori Cash. I'm 13 years old and I'm about to go to Urban Homes Academy. I'm here to speak on the behalf of, of those who couldn't make it or can, can't be recorded. We think it's unfair and, un and unright that we are not allowed to be recorded just because we're under 18. Other government bodies that we have visited have, have allowed us to be recorded and only counselors advise us the right to be docu doc <coughs> visually docu documented. I, we, feel, we feel that you guys are treating, treating us like kids even though we are, but we're doing something way beyond our, way beyond our potential on age group. We go every every day, we try to make the world a better place by trying to get you guys to divest in fossil fuels and trying to convince you that our world is hurting. But you guys don't listen. 
I, and I, and myself personally, I feel like you got, you guys want to listen, but you guys are scared of something. And I want to tell you, you guys don't have to be scared of anything. We want to be on the same side as you. We just need you guys to agree with some things on us and help us out. Does that conclude the yes. comments from uh, the first apocalypse? Okay, so yeah. we'll go back to our list here. Mishwa Lee. Mishwa Lee from Sunrise Movement. Davis, Mishwa, are you here? Wait, what was that? Mishwa. Mishwa yes. Lee. She's here. Mishwa? Sunrise is going to speak first. Right. So, Freya? Yeah. So what is your name? Freya Mar Johnson. Freya, do we have you on the list? Did you sign up? Yes. Okay, why don't you go ahead. Thank you. Sure. Um, good morning, my name is Freya Mar Johnson. I am a <coughs> college student at UC Davis. Um, sorry, I'm taking the mic off. Um, this is my second time speaking here um, in this setting and um, I want to tell you a, a hypothetical story or part of a hypothetical story that um, might well happen should this team not decide to um, to divest six billion dollars from fossil fuels. <coughs> Again, like I said last time, I'm not telling anyone how to do their job, I'm just exercising my right to speak in this setting. Um, a young college student such as myself or my colleagues skips class over and over again to attend meetings and rallies to protect the environment, knowing that it might be irresponsible. She graduates and continues fighting to preserve the air she breathes, the water she drinks, and the humanity with which she exists. Ultimately, however, it is in vain. Our efforts alone are not enough. We need you to cooperate with us. Please. Ultimately, Sacramento floods, a heat wave occurs, a drought, who knows, and within five years, any of this could happen. Lives could be lost. My life, anyone's life. Like so many people my age, I am considering not having a family. Seriously considering not having a family. And the more I think about it as I grow older and start thinking about these kinds of things, it's heartbreaking, the notion that my right to have a child should be taken away from me because Children produce so much carbon. Um, because ultimately, without a child, it wouldn't have clean air to breathe. Um, and within this story, um, I'm 50 years old, and the temperature has risen by 3 degrees Celsius, which is against the Paris Climate Accord. Um, thank you, and um, my friend will get the second part of the story. And did you just say that? Thank you, Freya. Your next, your next guest is your name, please. Hi, my name is Costanza, and I'm also from Sunrise Davis, and I'm a UC Davis student graduating this year. And I want to continue that story, but on a different scenario. So if we actually divested from fossil fuels and invested in a green economy, which is what is coming, and I am hopeful and I am certain that that is what the next 10 years, 20 years is going to look like, it's going to look like investing in our public transportation, electric cars, just super cool. I'm able to breathe. I'm able to drink water no matter my income. That's just, that's, that sounds so low in my standards, but it is. And I think it's important to know that it is possible. And it's possible if everybody puts their brain of sand in this and I don't want to continue missing my life because I am constantly fighting for this. And I am constantly at these meetings, at rallies, at things like that, because this is the future. And I am hopeful. I am hopeful that we can invest in better technologies, which exist, which exist. There's a bunch of foundations, a bunch of organizations that have so much better future. And they're not, they're not lies, they're there. Like, 
sequestering carbon and making limestone, making construction materials. It's the reality of our economy and it's going to change and it's better if California takes the first step to do that. We have a strong history of environmental action and we shouldn't stop today. Thank you. Thank you, Karen Perkins? Karen dresses yet? Um, I would like to request permission to sit before my comment starts. What is your name now? Emily Bunn. Emily. What's the nice movement? Okay, Emily, why don't you start? Okay, may I sit? Yeah, sure. Okay. Want to sit down for your comments? Yes, please. Of course. Your minutes, Emily. All right. Hi, I'm Emily Vine, and I'm a member of Sunrise Movement Sacramento, and also speaking on behalf on three teachers who could not be today, here today, and one past Calster's worker who couldn't be here today. Cyclone Google, millions displaced, ground 20, dead. Iranian floods, half a million displaced, around 70, dead. Cyclone Idiot, three million affected, two billion in damages. Rampant disease after. Mozambique alone, millions in urgent need. Months later, 1,005 confirmed dead. Australia, estimated $2 billion in damages. Over 3,000 homes, ecosystems destroyed. Two times yearly carbon output, 1 billion animals, more than 30 people dead. Still on fire. Here, we know fires too. Only a glimpse of 2019. This is under 1.5 Celsius of warming, dictated both by the IPCC report and the UN, not even at 1.5. Two degrees is too late. I am tired of being angry. What is beneath that is grief and fear. But without furious hope, I would be at home recovering from my failing health for months. Perhaps that communicates something. It helps. $5 billion would have been accrued through divesting years ago. And money is a motivator, but not the only one. You may have people you love, places that you find beautiful. Your care may stretch far beyond that. We all like feeling safe and happy. Financial accruement does not necessitate fossil fuel investment. Even if it did, we are sacrificing safety, then happiness, then more. We decided what part you play in the small window is up to you. After your decision, notice how it feels. We will not stop. The world will not stop. The window will close. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Uh, Karan Hamilton? Oh, yeah. I'm Karen Perkins. Karen? I was next. Um, okay, Karen, go ahead. Um, yeah. Thanks, I am. I, um, okay. Um, Recent headlines, December 31st, 2019. Goldman Sachs follows global peers on fossil fuels and has made the decision not to invest in Arctic oil projects. January 14, 2020. World's biggest investment firm, BlackRock, to shun fossil fuels as it steps up efforts to tackle climate change and calls for a, quote, fundamental reshaping of finance. January 16, 2020, CNBC. Microsoft will go carbon negative by 2030. Do you see a trend here? You're worried about losing money for the fund, and I appreciate that. I'm a retired teacher. But the corporate night study shows you're already losing money, and trends show it's not going to get any better. A Manhattan equity attorney friend of mine that Goldman Sachs actually cares about the future when investing. You remind me of a young bird in a nest afraid to fly. A big cat is on a nearby branch, and the parents are saying, you can't stay here forever. You need to learn to fly. And besides, the tree is being chopped down. But the little bird is afraid to take the leap. The nest is comfortable, and it's all the bird has ever known. You'd like the bird need to take that leap. Get out of your comfort zone. You're afraid of losing money? You are losing money right now from fossil fuels. Divesting is going on all over the world. Not everything in life is gradual. Sometimes things happen very quick, rapidly. 
Don't be the last bird to jump and leave us with stranded assets. The expression that youth are our future is true. The future is here talking to you. They want action now, not just pretty words. So do we. Um, you want to invest in? How about steel for windmills, materials for, other, for solar panels, electric charging stations, and electric cars, Aaron, bullet trains? Please finish up your comments. Thank you. When Greta Thunberg says fairy tales of paternal economic growth, she was wise beyond her years. Do you think that the economy will outlive the planet? We only have a few more years to act now. Hamilton. <clears throat> and then uh, David Bustamante after Karan. Thanks, my name is Curran Hamilton. Oh, Curran. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'm from Sunrise, Sacramento. Um, I, I'm going to keep my comments short because there are many younger people who are more knowledgeable and more articulate. I'm just here to say that there are other groups, as a previous speaker mentioned, like uh, BlackRock, which manages $7 trillion or something like that. Um, so if they can do it, you guys can do it. Thanks. Oh, man. Hi there, my name is David Monte. I first would like to say thank you for the opportunity to speak today. And I'd like to thank everyone who already spoke before me uh, for doing so. It takes some kind of bravery to uh, do some public speaking, especially in a group of people that I probably don't know most of you. Um, anyway, I'll keep mine simple and short as well. Uh, we're here to ask you today to make the move away from the fossil fuel industry, including divestment, and maybe because of the support you're providing for them. That um, is a simple goal for us because really the future of the planet is at stake. And not just the planet, the future of everyone in this room behind me. Uh, young or old, right? Because I'm sure all of you have at least some young people you care about, and I know that I'm sure while we're giving these comments, at least the, the thought has crossed your mind about them. And because of that, I'd like you to take, make the move away from the fossil fuel industry. I'm sure by now you're all tired of us speaking about this, but I, I also think that most of you would likely agree that climate change is a real issue. And I'd like you to make the next step from agreeing with us to supporting and working with us. And that's really all I have to say. Thank you. Carrie, there's one other speaker you called her earlier on. She gave her time to the young people. Oh, okay. so thank you. Sure. sure. Thank you. You're welcome. And your first name again is? Um, my name is Mishwa. Okay, Lee. Mishwa. Yeah, uh, you called me a little earlier. Yeah. So I'm Mishwa Lee, and I'm from stolen Ohlone Rhinotush land of Yalamu, otherwise known as San Francisco. Um, I'm a retired SFUSD teacher. My entire pension is dependent on CalSTRS. And it really pains me that I am, I, I am living off of dirty money. <clears throat> and I want to thank all the young people that are here, that are raising their voices, that are standing up, that are speaking for the other young people who are not, whose testimony is not loud. You represent teachers. We work with youth. How can you not accept and really hear what they're saying to us? They're warning us. Our indigenous elders tell us, watch out for the next seven generations. We're lucky that we are even, you know, we can barely watch out for our own generation. Come on now. I'd like to see a show of hands from the board. How many of you have children or grandchildren? Yay! Okay, a few of you. I'm sure that you all have young people that you're close to in some way or another, nieces, nephews. Think of them. I think of not only my children and grandchildren, but all the children that I've been so fortunate to work with. We need to hear their voices. And I really hope that you will take this to heart. This is not just a fiduciary issue, it is a moral issue, and it's the moral issue of our time. Come on, step up.
Loretta Cottenberg. Ms. Cottenberg? Don't no, no, bring me the mic. Of course. Go ahead, Loretta. You have two minutes, Loretta. I'm Loretta Cottenberger representing UCLA Retired and myself. I need to welcome our new board member, Denise Bradford. She's a kindergarten, kindergarten through 12. I have been a kindergarten teacher. I taught 45 years. I respect a new person, and she will be wonderful. That's my report about the new board member. Okay. Now, now, I, now I really feel badly because I knew I'd made a mistake about halfway through the public comments and I hadn't we welcomed Denise Bradford and it wasn't even 10 a.m. I had already made a mistake. So Denise, on behalf of the board, welcome. I'm so pleased that you joined us. Um, Comments. Uh, I would like to point out to members of the public that ha are not familiar with this report. It's a substantive report about the material impact that CalSTRS is having on the issue of climate risk and the opportunities that also are presented to the transition to a low carbon economy. This issue is not new to CalSTRS. We perceived and viewed in the world as a global leader on this issue. This document speaks to all of the work and achievements that CalSTRS has achieved to date on this critical issue to all of us. If you're not familiar with this report, I strongly encourage you to get a copy and educate yourselves on it. In particular, on page 62, there's a quote about CalSTRS' view on the issue of divestment. So I would encourage you to also reference page 62 of this report that speaks to this issue. So uh, I want to thank our staff for the work on that. There's also a document on the power of engagement and our view on this issue as well. Uh, because there are, during public comments, a lot of things are stated. We don't refute them. We don't engage in a conversation. That does not mean that everything that is stated before us is actually factual about who we are at CalSTRS, and I would not like the public to not have a full view and the record to be clear about CalSTRS' view on the issue of climate risk and the transition to a low carbon economy. It's an issue that we dedicate a lot of human resources and financial resources to in this organization. We've done it for years and we will continue to do it going forward. With that, uh, we're going to move on to the rest of our agenda, uh, if we could.